Welcome to Dorset. Today we're at Abbotsbury and we're here to shoot Dappled Lie. Great to see you all again, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're at Abbotsbury Viewpoint and we're here to shoot some nice rolling and dappled light. And it's a bit of an unusual one, this one, because usually, you know, we're, as photographers, conditioned to shoot golden hour in the morning and in the evening. But today, it's uh, a bit more around the sort of two, three o'clock mark. And uh, we're looking at some nice rolling light just coming through. And it's dappled from the clouds, just covering on the uh, sun there. So it's gonna give us a wonderful contrasty shot. And what we're waiting for is for the sun just to move round a fraction and as it moves round it's going to light up the back side of that chapel uh, in the background which is St Catherine's Chapel and it's only going to illuminate one side of it so it's going to give us this really nice hard contrasting uh, chapel just with a nice golden edge on one and quite a dark side on the other perched right on the top of a hill so it should look fantastic. Now this particular location is absolutely stunning and if you're familiar with the works of Thomas Hardy then this is the area that inspired all the uh, writings and poetry that he did and uh, not uh, too far away just over this side we've actually got the Hardy Monument and uh, that's absolutely glowing up today looking pretty awesome but uh, we're not here to shoot that today maybe another one uh, for the future but today we're looking at St Catherine's Chapel which as I say it's a uh, perched just on the top of a nice rolling bit of countryside. And that's what it's all about here. All these beautiful curves are all gonna become illuminated and they're really gonna be accentuated with the light and the shadow as it moves across this particular landscape. So it should look fantastic. The uh, aim of today is to come away with, uh, you know, several shots. Um, hopefully there, there'll be a little bit sort of different, some slight variation, but the shot is really the same. So I'm really keen to get a nice big panorama on here. Um, it really does lend itself well to a panorama shot, this particular location, uh, by the nature of the uh, rolling hillside that you've got. Um, and then you've got a view of Portland uh, right in the background and Chesil Beach stretching out into the scene. So it really, really does look rather nice and definitely, definitely suits a panorama style but uh, we're going to do some standard three by two shots as well uh, all we're doing we're just literally waiting for the light to get at the right moment and that's what this is all about basically dappled light shooting you're literally just staying there waiting for the light just to fill in the areas that you want it to show now it can be a bit of a frustrating one and you can spend a lot of time doing it and waiting and it will light all around the subject and not quite where you want it and uh, as i say it can be a little frustrating but when you get it right and it hits that particular area that you're after bang, you're going to have an absolute killer shot and it really, really will look fantastic. Now with these shots, what I tend to do is I like to underexpose them ever so slightly because I really, really want to protect the highlights. And what I'm going to do is going to bring most of it out in post-processing. Obviously, there's going to be a little bit of a contrast adjustment on here and potentially some dodging and burning as well. Uh, that will really, really show those uh, particular areas. And that's what I want to do is show this real contrast between light and then shadow. Uh, and the shadows, they can be quite dark out there. So, you know, it doesn't hurt to make them a little bit darker as well. But uh, yeah, it's hopefully going to look pretty good. In terms of aperture today, I'm going to be shooting at f16 because I've got a central subject, a main subject that I want uh, to be in focus, which is the chapel. That is, after all, the main feature of this particular shot. Uh, but there's also a really, really nice stretching, rolling beach, which goes right the way out to Portland. And then, of course, Portland itself there. And I'd like to get everything in focus. So I require, a, you know, a nice depth of field on this. So f16 is probably a, a nice aperture to do it. Um, I have 
played around in the past and I've shot the church at uh, sort of apertures like f8 to get real sharpness there and let the uh, focus fall off into the distance but it doesn't quite work as well as you know you would like it to sure you get a lovely sharp chapel on there but the uh, the, the fall off on the focus really just doesn't work quite as well so I'd like to keep a little bit more focus in there so uh, f16 is uh, the aperture that I'll be using today uh, in terms of shutter speed I'm going to try and keep it quite uh, quite low on here um, simply because it tends to be quite a windy area now at the moment we don't actually have much in the way of wind up here so that's quite good but uh, when there is a lot of wind your lens really you know can start to shake a little bit so uh, it is best to keep your shutter speed fairly fast uh, in terms of lenses I'm on the 100 400 today and um, probably going to be shooting at a variety of uh, distances somewhere between 100 mil and maybe about 200 mil if I do the panoramas um, it all depends really but um, you can probably get away with this shot with a 100 mil lens and still get a really really nice image of that chapel you don't have to crop in but there are some elements like a little road that twists in and it sounds like it'd be fantastic but uh, it's not really that good it doesn't look great in the shot in my opinion I have shot it with it in the past but uh, yeah I thought Sort of fallen out of love with that a little bit so I'm going to try and keep that road out of the shot and uh, try and use the light to sculpt out the landscape and show the areas that I want to show. Now there is an argument for doing a shot like this and having um, maybe multiple shots and then blending them together so you've got the light in the areas you want and it is a good technique and uh, you know I guess I'm not really that against it but it's not what I want to do. Uh, I'd like to try and capture it in just one exposure. Um, that's my preferred method for all my photography photography really. Uh, nothing against the other way, it's just I'd like to capture what is there in front of me, not what I want there to be in front of me. So I'm um, going to you know, try and sort of stick it out with one exposure on this one. Now it's been a bit of a funny day in terms of the uh, light. It's been very, very clear at times and then, you know, very, very cloudy at others. And it's gone a little bit cloudy at the moment and the uh, the light's not rolling past there too much. But uh, on this type of uh, shooting, you do require that mix of sun and cloud. Obviously the cloud provides the shadow areas that you see going over. So uh, you really do need some light and some shadow as well. One of the things that I'm really trying to get right here is I really want the light actually on the chapel itself when I take these pictures. Um, essentially, I don't care if the rest of the scene is really sort of almost blacked out. It's really important for me that I get light on that chapel. And without it, it just doesn't really work. It's really, really important to show that particular subject that you're you know, trying to compose. Now, it's gonna be quite small in the frame. It's not gonna be a really dominant one, but it is the dominant feature of the landscape. So it's a bit of a contradiction. It's not something that you're zooming in close to, but you do want it to be sort of visible and quite noticeable and the light will actually do that. It will draw attention to it. And with the shadow on the rest of the area, it will take that attention away from that area. So it works quite well like that. We've got some absolutely beautiful golden light falling on the subject at the moment. Really does look stunning. And the later it gets, obviously the more sort of that sun comes down in the sky, gets a little bit lower, the more golden tone it's going to get. But there is a lot of big cloud right on the horizon. So eventually the sun is going to go behind it. Now that means come sunset time, it's not going to be worth, you know, any shot at all. So uh, it just goes to show that these daytime shots, they can work and they can score you maybe that extra bonus shot that you wouldn't have got if you just went out in the morning or in the evening. It's a beautiful picturesque village here as you travel through Abbotsbury and uh, it's a, just a lovely, lovely area. There's not lots and lots of uh, other things to shoot around here. This is pretty much the main subject. And as I say, there's not lots of compositions to go out with it, but it uh, is particularly nice. Um, and it's just a nice area to come out to. Very, very easy location to get to. You've got parking and you can walk straight down to it. It's not a particularly big walk at all. Um, and it's not usually that busy up here to be fair as well. So it's quite nice because you get the place to yourself and you know, who does doesn't love a little bit of peace and quiet when they come and do their landscape photography. I know I certainly do. Well, I think we've been really, really lucky with the light here today at Abbotsbury. Uh, it can be, like I say, a frustrating process when you're waiting for light to come in. And when I started, you know, the light was sort of all there. There was no real shadow. The cloud cover just wasn't there. And I just had to wait it out for uh, sort of an hour or so for that cloud cover to come in. But once it came in, the shots came thick and fast and uh, there was plenty of variation. And that is the great thing about dappled light when you're shooting it. Although the landscape might be a landscape that's been shot a million times, it's going to look different every time you shoot it with these 
different sort of layers of light on there and different areas illuminated and different areas in shadow. So it's a really good way to freshen up a shot that, you know, is probably sort of has, has been done quite a bit. But um, the best way that you can do this sort of thing is finding a high elevation point. And that's what you've got here at Abbotsbury Viewpoint. It's really, really nice and high. You can see right the way across the landscape and uh, you get this nice dappled light. Obviously, if you're on flat ground, looking at flat ground, you don't really get to see the same thing. You do need to be up high to see down on the landscape to get it. Well, I think I've managed to nail a couple of shots here. Um, I've got the panorama and uh, I've got a couple of standard uh, three by two crop pictures. And uh, yeah, there's not gonna be lots and lots of difference in there, but I will stick these all up in a minute. You can have a look and see what I got up to. And uh, hopefully you guys will give uh, shooting dappled light, uh, you know, a bit of a go yourself. Uh, I'm sure plenty of you do already, but um, if you don't, please do give it a go. Anyway, I really appreciate everyone watching. And if you have enjoyed the video today from Abbots Free, please do hit that like button. Not only do I really appreciate it, but it really does help the video to get out there and if you're not a subscriber please do consider subscribing thanks so much for watching take care i'll see you next time